Okay, welcome to the world of sim racing in VR. As many of you may already know, if you follow the pit lanes various media platforms, and if you don't, why don't you? Links will be in the description below. So uh, please sign up, and you can find out all what's going on with um, pitlanes.com VR adventures. I just thought I would uh, load up a car of an iRacing in VR. One, make a test video. And two, just to give you my initial thoughts on the VR headset and how I think it works in uh, sim racing. So what we'll do is we'll get out on track. Now the first thing that you notice when you put your uh, VR headset on, which in my case happens to be the Oculus Rift, because they were down at their lowest ever price for Black Friday, is that this is not just like having a series of screens all around you. Initially I just thought it would be like having a bank of monitors all the way around you so wherever you looked you saw the game. But the moment you put the headset on you quickly realise that it's so much more than that. It creates this immersive 3D world, 3D environment that seems to have real genuine depth to it. And it's. it really does take you back. You just. you just don't expect it. No amount of videos, no amount of people trying to describe it, it prepares you for that initial that initial experience when you first put your headset on and try your first gaming title out we're in the uh, Ferrari GT3 car on I race and it's uh, Imola And uh, it's hard to really know how to get it across, but the sense of being that you get when you drop into the into the VR world, you really do feel like you are sat in the car. And that car is, is is a real thing within a real environment. You know, you have a, a far greater appreciation for the for the size of the vehicle and where it sits in relation to the track. Yeah. You know, you can look across and you, you can you can see the width of the car over there. You can see it as you look in the mirrors, you know, where you are in relation to the curbs, the apexes. And I find that you... You know, you, you you have to sort of 
almost relearn how you drive the car compared with a flat 2D screen. Now, I had a triple screen set up with a half decent field of view. So I didn't think the jump from triples to VR was going to have that bigger impact. I really didn't. But it's a whole new ball game. You know, you just you just know where you are in relation to the track and to other cars. That it just just feels far more natural, far more real, and you know you find yourself looking into the corner, looking at the airport. It's something you don't have to think about. It's just a completely natural reaction. Now I don't have a virtual mirror, so when I know the cars you just quick glance in the car's camera or rear view mirror. But you don't have to think where it is or to run to look in it. Because you just, your eye is just naturally drawn. You know, if you've got somebody coming up on your inside, you just naturally look across. You can see them, you know where they are in relation to both you and the trail. Yeah. It really is something different. No, in fact, so much so that within a few days of getting the rift in and set up, I dismantled my triple screens. All I know is just have a, it's just a small basic monitor for uh, desktop work. But once I'm at the desktop, I'm straight into the rift headset, and that's where I remain. I feel that confident that, you know, for me, this is the future going forward now. I don't want to race on a screen anymore now. No, it's not to say that VR is perfect. I initially found some of the sim titles a little confusing to get set up. Like race room, you have to go to Steam, properties, launch, and you know, type in minus VR into the launch properties so it will launch into VR. And with Project Cars 2, I had to change the address of the desktop shortcut for it to open up in VR. And in both instances, I, I had to do a quick Google search. So there are, you know, it's not as simple as just file the game up, whack your headset on, and away you go. You know, some titles do require some adjustment to the. Um, executable that launches this game. iRacing was one of the few exceptions in that as, the, as you step to the car on the track it auto detected the rift and said oh do you want to use the rift? And yes and it just fired up on the headset easy as that so I think 
as this as the VR headsets become more popular, especially now with Windows coming along with their mixed reality headsets. Hopefully more sim tiles or future sim tiles will just be VR. They'll auto detect, they'll launch. Maybe the first time you ever use it, it'll give you an option. And it'll just remember that. But yeah, you know, once you get all your titles up and running, it is pretty painless to launch in the VR. Of course, the biggest issue at the moment is the resolution. It's not. It's not pixel perfect. It's not that it's a low resolution. It's just that where your eyes are so close to the screen and the headset is that you can see the pixels, I suppose. Now. Stuff up close, like the car cockpit and the car itself, you don't really notice it. It is often to the distance that it affects you more. Like trying to read the board markers for the corners, you don't see the, um, the numbers on them so well as you would do if you were on a monitor. But they do come into focus and within time for you to better read them and know which is the one that you should be using. So it's not like that you can't see what's going on. You just have to wait for it to get a little bit more a little bit closer really. Now for me the slight pixelation wasn't quite such a big deal. I had four year old 19 inch triple monitors, so I only had a resolution of 4220 by 900. And I sat virtually as close as I could to them, so I never had an ultra pin sharp screen in the first place. So it's not been that jarring. Now, if you had a, a 4K monitor, 144 hertz refresh rate, and you suddenly just slap this on, once you got over that initial wow factor, I think it, it would be jarring. Now, fortunately, you can with a lot of sim titles either in in game like project cars 2 or with race room and i racing you can go into the various ini files and you can adjust what's called super sampling so you can crank up the resolution you ask in the headset to display in and then it downscales it back sharpens up the image, tightens it up and it really does make a difference to the character. You really don't find that screen door effect to be half as bad. But again, it requires you to go into the settings, you've got to tweak it a little bit. And the amount of super sampling you can run depends on the, how much eye candy you've got on, how well optimised that sim title is for VR. So you have to, it requires you to fiddle about and tweak to get it right. I can run most of my sim titles about 1.5 super sampling, which is roughly doubles the image that the riff riff resolution yeah the riff resolution gets upscaled to before it's 
Gotta scale the game. No, I find that that's an acceptable match between performance and clarity. And I'm happy with it. I can most of all out that without any real major vision problems. Also, the other big thing with the risk that held that held me, you know, back from buying them for a while was I, I wear glasses. I'm near sighted, so was I going to be able to use the roof with my glasses, or if I couldn't get my glasses in the headset, how would my eyesight ruin or distort the image? Well, it turns out that you can wear the headset with glasses. In fact, I'm wearing my glasses inside my wrist now while recording this video. And what I will say is once you've got the headset on, you don't really notice any major discomfort. It's it's not as yeah, you know, it's not as easy to to wear um, as if you know without them, of course, because you you know you're aware that there is a little bit of pressure where the foam of the mask you know creates a seal around your face. There's a little bit of pressure on the uh, frame there, so you can see it, but. Once you start racing, you soon forget about it. But the biggest killer is trying to get the headset on and off. So much so that after a week or so of on and off, on and off, on and off, I've decided to order a set of prescription lenses with a VR frame that I can just drop into the rift, clip in place, forget about it and not use my glasses. Got them, well I've ordered them for high school. Widmo VR or something like that. What I will do is I'll leave a link in the description to their website so you can have a look and work out how to pronounce it for yourselves. It's going to take about a week or so. So, I haven't got them at the moment, but from what I can see on the internet, on the whole, I seem to get pretty positive reviews. So, I'll give them a try, see how I get on with them. Also, feeling sick. What I did decide to do was I just didn't leap in and start racing straight away. What I did do was I just, like I am now, ran some, ran some practice laps. Just on my own, getting used to the, you know, the new sort of 3D effect that these headsets give you. And I, you know, first time I used it, a quarter of an hour or so, then up to half an hour. I haven't worn it much over an hour yet. I'm just sort of building up what they call you know, VR tolerance. And so far, I've only had one episode where I felt ill. And I mean, ill instantly. And that was in Dirt Rally when uh, I was trying to overdo it, graphics was, and the game stuttered, but really badly. Now the first major stutter, disorienting, caused me to crash. So I stopped for a moment, just got myself sorted, and carried on. Well the next major stutter, just made me feel sick, instantly. I take the headset off, I'm off the game, 
and walk away from the moss in with this stop. And you know what? It took a couple of hours before I felt I was able to come back on. But not to do it rally, I didn't. I left out and came back the next day to it. Set the uh, graphics level down and to remove the stutter and I went ahead and completed the stage without a problem. So you've got to make sure you set each title up properly. Because the last thing you need is major stutter. Because it will just... It's so jarring to be suddenly ripped out of that world that your brain has been fooled into thinking is real. That it just completely throws out of whack. I say, it made me feel ill instantly. No, oh, I'm starting to feel a bit queasy. That, that I was just ill. Now, fortunately, I haven't had that in any other uh, sim title as of yet. I've done some AI races in both project cars and race room without any incidents or problems. And I've done a horse race in our racing which is what 25 minutes long and I was fine. It's very intense and I did find that my eyes do get quite tired as I as I'm adjusting to the, you know, the headset. The fact that you find yourself staring because you're so drawn in to this VR world. So, uh, I've got to, I'm learning to relax when I've got the headset on now. I'm not quite get so drawn in, so quite so involved. And it, it, that's helping a lot now. But you do have to take your time, build yourself up, and just get used to it. Cause it's just so different to seeing your favourite simulation title in VR than it ever was on a triple monitor, single monitor, TV, whatever. But like I say, this video is something a little bit different. I just wanted to share some of my initial thoughts about Michael's Rift and how I was finding it either, uh, for sim racing. And for me, it's. I just knew. As soon as I put it on, as soon as I left the pit lane. And just you know, looked around all the, the dash, the car, the, the, the sense of immersion, the sense of depth that this, that this VR is again. I just knew I couldn't go back to driving on a monitor again, I couldn't go back to that disconnected feeling that you know that you weren't really sat in a car and driving it, which is what. These VR headsets give you. Yes, you know they they aren't high res. They are tricky to set up. But that first time that you line up on a grid, sat in the car, and you, you know you look to your left, you look to your right, and. And you're surrounded by cars in this in this 3D environment. It doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't matter. The sense of immersion is so great that you can overlook the pixel issues. You can overlook the fact that 
you have to tweak and fiddle and fettle to get everything running right. Turn one with a pack grid in a VR headset is so intense. You haven't got time to worry about anything but the action going on in front of you. Me, I'm hooked. And I'm, I'm glad I finally went for it. Now, if you've got any um, questions, any thoughts or opinions, please leave a comment and I will try and give you my opinions, feedback or try and answer any questions you've got. Although you have to remember, I am new to this so I'm still, I'm still tweaking the headset, the sim titles. So it, if you notice anything that you think I'm doing wrong, or if you think you've got any hints or tips to help improve my VR experience, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about what you found works best, what your experiences are, what to avoid. And as like I mentioned before, check out pit lines on all the social media platforms. We are active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we have a really lovely Discord group. And I'm always posting in there my thoughts as I get more and more involved in VR. Now, hopefully, you enjoyed this video, even though there was no racing action in it. It was still, you know, enjoyable to hear some of my thoughts and views on my VR experience so far. And uh, I will be, as I get OBS set up properly and I can get it to record better, I will be putting up some races both online and offline. If there's any, if there's a sim title you want to see, or you're particularly interested in, I will uh, try and um, sort something out and uh, get something up on there that you all want to see. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you did. Please subscribe if you haven't. To, to keep an eye on future VR content and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.